Hello, hello! And welcome back to the Dawn of the Dead, as I prepare to give Zack Snyder one more reason to weep in Perfidious Pete Plays XCOM 2. That's right. Thanks to the beautiful, lovely Atlas King, the greatest, sexiest man to ever live, Plan Z here is in full effect. We have an army of Psy Zombies ready to go forth and do our bidding. What can I say? Atlas King's animal magnetism and pure sexual machismo has transcended even intergalactic species barriers and uh, has won the heart of this, uh, this poor humble gatekeeper. She's just a girl with a dream, a dream of a love for Atlas King. She's going to be ultimately disappointed, one, because Atlas King is into dudes, and two, Alice King's heart is always and forever the property of one Madison. But still, it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing to meet a man who's so capable of engendering love and goodwill as Alice King. I can understand why this gatekeeper has decided, even at the 11th hour, to turn coat and start fighting for the forces of XCOM. Alice King is just that, uh, he's that persuasive. Fortunately also for me personally, it's a love that this gatekeeper is capable of passing on to every single advent trooper we can find and kill, and it's going to be our very own little Dawn of the Dead here. This really is a kind of a beautiful pay-it-forward sort of scenario, except I suppose with less Haley Joel Osment getting fatally stabbed by a bully. There's less of that going on. Hold on a second. Haley Joel Osment played, what was that kid's name, Trevor, in Pay It Forward, and he got fatally stabbed. But he was also Cole in The Sixth Sense, and if Cole can see dead people, and Bruce Willis's ghost can be the thing that made the real Haley Joel Osment decide to step away from acting, do you think that the ghost of Trevor McKinney can be the thing that makes the real Bruce Willis decide to step away from John McClane? It's kind of a fictional reality switcheroo sort of scenario, but... If you could avoid Die Hard Year One, Bruce, you gotta, for the love of all that is good and holy, you gotta avoid it, man. A good day to die hard damaged the franchise enough, don't you think? Don't you think? Don't take some sort of shitty half cameo in a period piece movie where your flagship character is played by another younger actor. Just, just, just don't do it, Bruce. Did you, did you learn nothing from Terminator Genesis? Did Terminator Genesis and Terminator Salvation teach us nothing as a species, Bruce? Nothing? Learn from past mistakes, man. Don't don't reenact. Don't reenact the mistakes of others. Don't be perfidious, Pete. Is what I'm saying. Don't fail to be capable of experiential learning. Speaking of experiential learning, we're gonna go forward with Plan Z here and see how it works out. I'm gonna bring a fairly cautious approach to Plan Z here, in that I'm sort of trying to turn over a new leaf. Where I I don't want to say exhibit caution in all things, but that that's actually what I'm shooting for: exhibiting caution in all things. An abundant and careful progression is what I'm looking for here. We got to keep our gatekeeper safe. Our gatekeeper is the thing that's keeping these Psy zombies under control. And again, that's all thanks to the beauty and loveliness of Atlas King. Where the hell is Jake Busey? Thank you, Jake Busey. I need you going forward and doing some work here, dog. You are still my scout because you're still concealed. And somebody has got to go forth and do the peeping and the sneaking for Team Z over here. I don't want to just wander Team Z in an ambush. I'm also trying to conserve zombie resources. These zombies, they're, uh, they're an expendable resource and admittedly somewhat renewable. But if I want to renew my zombie horde, I do have to find more advent troopers because we can't just zombify anything. Like this dead Archon and these two dead Mutons, they are, they are not zombie fodder. We can't convert those into zombies. We've just got these four Zeds who can probably really only withstand a single hit a piece. I think that's going to be about the extent of what the zombies can achieve. Copy that. But all other things considered, I really feel like our start to the final mission is going pretty well. If if all is told and all things being equal, Move I feel it. pretty good. We've got if nothing else, basically four free mimic beacons here that can shamble ahead of our army and trigger pods. I feel pretty good Move about that. You read the baby maker Novak also on a fantastic killing spree. Yes, this is correct, Pete. Yeri must pay the kill totals before the final mission. Franklin the D. Roosevelt will not be champion. This I have spoken. He does have me slightly edged out, and again, despite small sample size and really statistically invalid comparison, even even technically, Yeri cannot be beaten. Even if there is asterisk behind it, Yeri is not going to wind up the Roger Maris in this situation. Champion with asterisk. No, no. Yeri will be legitimate champion, Pete. There will be no asterisk. That will not be Roger Marist. 
That's a surprisingly adroit baseball right reference there for a Russian fella. Is Russia, is, is, is baseball big in Russia? Not to be really repeat, but you know, Yuri is a man of many parts. He, he's American pastime, like apple pie, and uh, you know, despicably bad movies, things of this nature. I, I don't see, Yuri does not seem reason to not embrace, not embrace the uh, customs of his adoptive nation. This is fine. He's, he's good. Broaden your worldview, Pete. Perhaps you should investigate some of the many delightful Russian sports. Have you ever conceded? I'm not really a sports guy at all, Yuri. I don't even really, apart from baseball, I'm really not much into sports themselves. Baseball's kind of my, kind of my one bit. This is unfortunate, Pete. You should really try and broaden your horizons. Don't spend so much time playing video games. Go outside once in a while. Try and enjoy the world around you. You will be happier to man. Also, it give you more opportunity to perhaps make babies like Yuri Nore. You could be very own baby man. Alright, what do we got? Some manner of robot. Possibly a sectopod? Hold oh, some manner of robot. Well now. That's not some manner of robot. It's every manner of robot. Alright, we gotta get a little closer look at this situation. Jake Busey? On the move. Thank you. I'm really glad we still have Jake Busey's concealment, because that is not a pod I would have relished stumbling upon in the dead of night. That would have been real bad. That's a shitload of friggin' robots. How close can we get without being spotted? Here, uh, one further, one tile further forward, and we are absolutely spotted by. Is that five friggin' robots? That is all robots, and it's not five; it's six. That that's that's an abundance of robots. It really is. All right. Well, we can't advance to here, and this will be our line in the sand. Yeah, we go one tile further forward, we totally get spotted. So, Team Zed can advance to the limit of this blue move. That's what we'll do, then. Honestly, I should prefer to not have to have Team Zed engage this pile of robots at all, because those robots are going to one-shot any member of Team Zed. But this is fine. We can use Team Zed sort of as a marker, if we want to, to just uh, remind us where we're allowed to stand and where we're not, and we can get the rest of the team in position. If we could have... This is a big if, by the way, but if we could have the Commander's Avatar drop a Void Rift on those guys... That would be some solid intrinsic instant damage. It's really the only AoE damage. Oh man, what could. I was gonna say it's really the only AoE damage that I'd, I'd sort of be comfortable using this early in the game. But now that I'm thinking about it, move, move, man, move. could Steve Irwin just absolutely ruin them with a capacitor discharge? He, it, he, would, he would decimate them. And you say, uh, you don't want him to decimate them, Pete. You want him to devastate them. Because to decimate kills means to, to kill one part in ten. Whereas devastate means to utterly annihilate. You want him to devastate them, not decimate them. If he, devast if, if he decimates them, he doesn't even kill one whole robot. And then I'd, you know, call you out for being a pedantic douche. But, uh, sorry, it's one of my pet peeves. I really hate it when people use the word decimate to mean devastate. It's... it's uh, it, it troubles me on a fundamental and emotional level with which I probably am more comfortable than I should be. But what can I say? I'm kind of a pedantic son of a bitch, and I'm not ashamed of it. This is what happens when you get a degree in English, by the way. You just become a pedantic jerk. Psy Zombie, you're probably good. Uh, Team Zombie, the rest of you guys are sort of falling down on the job. Let's form a battle line here. I got my battle, my, my line of battle-ready zombies. If they're battle-ready, we might as well get them in and have them do some damage. Atlas King, what the hell are we going to do with you? Because fucking with robots really isn't your strong suit. We could have you shoot them, or we could have you stasis them, or we could have you hit one with Fuse and blow up his buddies, because it would be a big enough explosion that we'd get some minimal damage on it. But that's only going to be true while they're packed into that tight of a wad, which I have to assume is going to be a situation that doesn't last forever. Mr. Gatekeeper, I think you're probably good right the shit where you are, pal. We're just going to leave you there. I don't see any compelling reason to move you whatsoever. Um, now, Atlas King, let's just bring you up here into this full cover. You got a bit of a long run. And you are still mind-controlling our zombie, even though the mind-control indicator is not pointed anywhere near the actual gatekeeper. Did I say zombie? I, you know, gatekeeper to zombie, zombie gatekeeper. It goes down the chain. It, it's like inheritance in object-oriented programming here. That's six robots. That's a lot of robot. That's that's for damn sure. Man, could I really go for another Helen Keller proximity mine right about now? 
So how do we want to activate this pod? It really feels like Overwatch trap is best trap, right? Or Master Chef Busey could devastate them all with a plasma. Oh, that's also very tempting. Alright, stovepipe. You're gonna get spotted if we move out there. How close can we get? Basically no closer than we are now. If we move even one tile closer than anybody is now, we get spotted. That's suboptimal. Only because there's not there's there's no real opportunities for cover along this line. That's why it's suboptimal. Where is the commander's avatar? How far can we throw the doom bomb? Man, this thing is so enormous. We need to get a little closer. Either we need to get a little closer. Actually, wait a minute. One, two, three. That's only hitting five of them. One of them's got to be up here where we can't see him, but that might be catching him as well. It's definitely not catching that guy. He is out of it, no matter how we position it. That guy ain't in it. Also, if we position it wrongly, we're going to fry Jake Busey. A situation I should vastly prefer to avoid. The commander's avatar can't get any closer, I don't think. Wait, can we get to this tile without being spotted? We can. That that may be enough. This one tile might be a big enough swing. It is, in fact, a big enough swing. Oh, oh, I feel a little bit like feel a little bit like Tom Jones here. I've got the lead, and I know how to swing it, and I think maybe it's time for us to swing it. The question is what to do with everybody else. I very much should relish the thought of having a monstrously huge Overwatch trap. Is Abe Lincoln perfectly positioned for that Overwatch trap? Not perfectly, but he is reasonably well positioned. Abraham Lincoln is the best bet for the Overwatch because he has the Guardian ability. If we get lucky, it's unlimited Overwatch. Keller is also in an excellent position for some Overwatch here. And I think we're going to have Yuri spring spring the ambush. Steve, you're good. Team Zombie is probably also good. I'm actually a little worried about Jake Busey because his concealment has done such good work for us here. If we don't have to burn his concealment, I'd, I'd prefer not to. If we don't have to burn it, let's not burn it. Let's overwatch with Busey. Just in case the guys run forward and spot him up. Yuri is in full cover. Ready to deal? Let's let's do a long watch overwatch from here, man. The commander's avatar can drop the bomb. The gatekeeper. I'm actually gonna I'm gonna back you up a little bit. I kind of feel like zombie army maybe should back up a little too. These guys are kind of squishy. You know what? Just out of abundance of caution, let's let's have the zombie army also fall back. I don't want zombie army getting caught in like a micro burst grenade or anything like that, because that would. That's the one attack that might not kill them, now that I think about it. Zombies are kind of squishy. The the micro burst grenade would be one of the few attacks we might face at this point that would be incapable of doing eight damage. Atlas King, you only have one shot on Overwatch, which is sort of tragic. Let's keep Atlas King as an emergency backup in case, just in case we need a like a, a panic stasis or something. We'll have Atlas King. No, because then... No, that actually won't work, because then we're not... Well, we're not triggering them on their move unless they walk into us anyway. And they're not pathing this way. Now, we're going... Pa All right, we're going to do this classic style. We're going to hit them with the Doom Brigade. Also, they can't really come forward along this line, because at the end of it, they'll still be inside the Doom Sphere. The Doom Sphere de definitely sounds like some kind of habitat for Doctor Doom. Doom is in the Doom Sphere. You, did you just straight up kill two of those mechs? That you, yes, straight up killed two of them outright. That's pretty impressive work. All right, here comes the old Overwatch starting things off. Yuri, the baby maker Novak. This Pete, Yuri delivers. It, it was not a kill, Pete, but it was still a pretty, I think, okay shot. Here comes the dead eye, Helen Keller. Can she finish with Yuri start? Yep, she finished. That man is in the ground, Pete. Yeah, he's okay. It's time for Abraham Lincoln to not shame himself Thank with Overwatch you. shooting. This is time for Guardian ability to actually become useful. Honest Abe, please, you must deliver here. Unlimited Overwatch with full clip would be magnificent. So of course you fucking missed you. Put you almost shot Jake Busey's leg off. That was not good, Pete. That was not good at all. Steve Irwin. Also, uh, might not to say things not feeling too good for old Steve either. 
Alright, so that guy is in the... He's in the Doom blocks. That man is, I think, also still in the Doom box. He also only has two health. Which I don't find hugely concerning. So we have all four size zombies and Atlas Key. Void Rift does not injure robots. Probably the best move here is to just... Hold on a second. Is it the best move? Or is the best move to inspire Yuri Novak and have him face off? I really wish I could I could tell how many of these guys Yuri could see. Also, Yuri does not seem to be a valid target for Inspire because for whatever reason we can't see Yuri. We gotta get in a tile where we can see Yuri. What if we have you come around here, Atlas King? Can you see him from over here? You've almost gotta be able to see him from here. So if we move Atlas King and then we go for the Inspire, can you see you can can you see Yuri now? Can you see him now? You see him? I see you, girl. Look deep into my eyes. This is Yuri Novak. We could even possibly get concealment with Yuri. Oh, Piet, Yuri is about to impress you like Shania Twain song. Oh, you're gonna be much impressed like this. That actually make it the opposite of Shania Twain song, but still. What's, what's your hit percent like here, Yuri? Excellent. Can't miss. And really good. So then, alright. Yuri, why don't you start things off with a nice lightning hand shot on this guy. His armor is going to be a problem, admittedly. Hard target, minimal damage. <sighs> Yuri might not be able to get him. We do have another free shot if we wanted it. If we wanted it, we'd have another free shot. You know what? Yes. We're not going to get the kill because of that man's armor. We have to hit him with the Shadow Fall. If we can get him down to three, I'm confident Yuri can face off and kill three robots. We did not get him down to three. I did. Yeah, I did fantastically not amazing damage, Yuri. All right, that was suboptimal. We'd have been better off to just reposition Casanova. Um, excuse me? That was not supposed to take an act. Ugh. Okay. Well, that's, uh, that's definitively very bad. Team Zombie, get a spread out. Also, Team Zombie, you, you may, you may have to go, you gotta go take one for the team, Team Zombie. I'm sorry, Team Zed. You gotta, you gotta do it. One of you zombies is gonna have to nobly sacrifice your unlife for the good of the XCOM project. I feel a little guilty about sending one of my loyal Zeds forward to die, but this is why we have the loyal army of Zeds. Gatekeeper, move forward exactly one space. What are you going to do? You better shoot at the friggin' zombie. It's standing out in the open with no cover like an asshole. I have no idea what that this is. Going. Well, Jake Busey's going to kill this robot, and our cover is blown. All right, Jake Busey is still in full cover, and that does very strongly eliminate one problem. I should have preferred to Jake Busey still remain concealed, especially since we wasted Yuri's only chance at uh, gaining concealment. What are you shooting at? Taking a crack at one of my zombies and missed, huh? Suck it. Team Zed is undefeatable. You can't handle Team Zed. These guys are definitely all going to run forward because they're going to get out of the Doom Sphere. They have escaped the Doom Sphere. Or at least some of them did. There is no cover anywhere back there at all anymore. There's also still a robot back there. One, two, three. This is four, five. Where is six? Okay, sacrifice zombie, you may have to go... You may have to go make the ultimate sacrifice here. Can you really... I mean, can we really call this the ultimate sacrifice? This man is already dead. Also, he's definitely taking Overwatch here. Which is suboptimal. Yeah, that was dumb. This is why I brought the zombies, though. This is what the zombies are for. They're for doing this kind of stupidly ridiculous stuff that I might otherwise screw up. Where the hell is that other robot? Oh, it jumped up here. It was up top. What if we take a zombie and put him up top to try and get eyes on You're gonna go high and scout? Oh, my zombies will chase you. They can climb. These are not Max Brooks zombies. These zombies have a vertical element. Master Chef Busey can definitely kill one of these guys. And it would put him in Untouchable, which I don't hate.
Yeah, I don't hate it. Let's do it. Jake Busey very calmly just stating a fact. I can handle that. I am Jake Busey, and this is a non-problem for me. I am going to go shotgun this man into shiny pieces. Chunklets for you. I don't want to stand in that cover because it's on fire and thus in danger of burning down. Jake Busey, let's have your implacable move come Whatever over here. Say. Just keep eyes on the enemy if you could. Who wants a kill? Uh, Yuri definitely could use opportunity for the redemption, Pete. Can I just take pistol shot here? Thank you. Okay, Yuri is feeling better about self, although admittedly, Pete, you know I'm not good against armed Enemy's targets. Down. This is not Yuri's strong suit. Now I will be on Overwatch, and I really think perhaps rest of team might also consider just uh, a timely Overwatch trip, Pete. What do you say? Maybe take advantage of Overwatch while advantage exists to be taken? You know, Yuri, for once, I think you're giving me sound tactical advice. Unlike the whole get out and make yeah, babies yeah. thing. I don't, I'm too old for that and also not really well inclined. I would be a bad father. Sometimes, you know, in, in life, you just got to really assess your own abilities and whatnot and realize that there are some things you are not suited for. And fatherhood for me is one of those things. That would have been a terribly awful dad. I know my limits. I stay within them. Push your limits, Pete. No, this is this is one limit one should not push. Commander's avatar, your best ability is on cooldown. One of the nice things about having the commander's avatar in a forward position, though, you can afford to take risks with the commander's avatar. Because the commander's avatar heals five health a turn. He's fine. He's got a built-in regenerative ability. You can just chill. You know what, gatekeeper? In fact, let's not just have you chill. Let's just step back one. I just want your turn to end so I can stop flipping through you every time the move encounter comes up. See, there's definitely still a robot somewhere because I can hear it turning to face our guys. It is turning, ever turning. Turning and turning in a widening gyre like a uh, Stumpy B. Yates pole. Atlas King. I don't suppose you could go forward and spot this robot. If you can, spot the robot. You did not spot the bot. Spot the bot is the new Milton Brothers board game for ages 6 to 12. It's sweeping the nation. Spot the bot from Milton Brothers. Can you spot the bot? It's basically pin the tail on a docky with just a robot in it. It's it's not creative, but it's going to be a huge moneymaker. The people at Milton Bradley are glad to be back in the board game game. They've been out of the game for a long time, and they're, they're glad to be back in the game. You, size Zombie, just kind of shuffle around. You're zombies, so it comes naturally to you. Shuffling should be right in your wheelhouse. Where is that other friggin' robot? I can hear it stomp, stomp, stomping about. It's over in this neighborhood somewhere. I, I don't want to send Master Chef Busey forward to try and pop him. Master Chef Busey is too valuable and too injured also. He's valuable and injured. All right, Johnny Expendable Zombie. Go forth and execute your man. Okay. Johnny Expendable Zombie still doesn't have anything. Maybe we killed that entire pod. Did I miscount corpses? One, two, three. You should really learn to count, Pete. That pot is dead. Johnny Expendable Zombie already did all the heavy lifting taking that Overwatch. There's nothing left of that pot. It's it has been eradicated. Well then, that's uh, a that's this. a whole different ball of wax. Then we can just continue advancing under cover of uh, Zombie Scout. We got our noble Scout Zombie out there back radioing us intel about the enemy's position. Uh, it's all clear. Uh, Admittedly, zombie scouts would take a long time to deliver their scouting report. Because, you know, the moaning and the constant cries for brains probably would take a non-zero amount of time. Let's just go ahead and get a reload off, then. Locked and loaded. Yeah, you're locked, you're loaded and ready to roll. We're gonna put you on Overwatch. Yuri Baby Maker Novak, we're taking our time, Plan Z. I feel good, Plan Z is working. I, I am a little confused. I don't know how to feel when a plan comes together. I am not Hannibal Smith. I'm not used to having a plan come together. I can't say that I love it when a plan comes together because it's never happened before. First time for everything. This is unexplored territory. This is virgin territory for Perfidious Pete. Uh, Gatekeeper, you could probably tolerate advancing. Let's just move you into one yellow move move. You're good. Scout zombie, I think we just leave you forward in your scouting zombie-like position and uh, maybe bring you some of your compatriots forward. 
we may need cannon fodder shortly and zombies fit the definition get you up here you size zombie just one step to the left please thank you you zombie number four one step to the left please back against the wall stand up straight some kind of human enclosure it's the apartment from french Ellie. we discussed this last time made a lot of 1990s sort of dated uh, monica and chandler references here for some sort of psychological testing if the zombies have been living on Earth for a really long time, what would they need to psychologically test in a household setting with humans that they couldn't get just by observing humans in households? They're the alien masterminds who secretly run the world. What is it they're possibly trying to learn that they can't just manipulate in situ? I mean, they have 7 billion humans on the planet. Don't they have plenty of test subjects? This this seems contrived. This is pro you know what it probably is. This is some aliens graduate studies like grant project. The university was happy because they got additional funding for this. The ethereals approved it. They were like, oh, the ethereals approved that 4.2 million mega imperial universe credits for us to study these humans in a natural human environment. And invariably, there was like the one hip professor on staff who was brought up the fact that they have an unlimited number of human households on which they can observe and experiment at will, at no cost to the public. And they were like, shut up, Jim. God, this is funding for the university. We don't actually have to spend any on the project. Could you keep your mouth shut? Why do these windows have glass in them, by the way? Overwatch. Some kind of containment facility, I have to assume. That's really the only reason for there to be glass in any of these windows. Let's, ad oh, man, I was going to say let's not advance, but we sort of have to advance a little. We know there's going to be a pod in this house. The last time we came through this area, there was a pod. I think I'm going to take one more turn to let everybody catch up. So Team Zombie, let's, let's get you, let's get you a little further forward. I don't want to have to advance across this open ground once a pod has been popped. That's sort of what I'm looking to avoid. I don't want to have to do it while there are enemies. I would like to be up against this wall before the enemies arrive. So if we can engineer that, that's exactly what I'm going to do. We want to be able to get across this no man's land between these two... I don't want to say tile pieces, but tile pieces is what they are. Between these two tile pieces... Here I come. I'm, I'm terrified there's a pod in here that's just barely out of line of sight. Man, that sounds supremely dangerous. I want to step forward into this cover, but... No, you know what? It could pop a pod. It's not worth it. Atlas King, go around. Don't take stupid risks, Pete. It's in your nature to take stupid risks, but you gotta fight it, man. You gotta fight it. This is not the time, Pete. This is not the time. Jake Busey's all over it. Oh, that was... Sorry, Abraham Lincoln also is all over it. Who's left? Uh, Helen Deadeye Keller. Well, Keller, we gotta get you close to the front. We need you up and in and ready to deal. Master Chef, I think you can just be overwatching. It's fine. Keller on a sprint. And that just leaves the commander's avatar who... No, you know, no, it's not worth it. Stop looking at that tile, Pete. It's an attractive nuisance. You can't let yourself get suckered in, man. Stand in the open if you have to. You don't need cover right now. There are no enemy, enemy pods active. Don't fall for the gambit. Gatekeeper, we are going to bring you up a little bit. There's a potential chance where your support beam weapon could come in supremely handy. Things could be in a dire situation where a little one-shot beam shot from a gatekeeper, whose aim for an alien is actually pretty good, could be a situation where we might need it. Size zombie, we're just going to move you to here, and then we're going to shuffle you right back where you belong. Come on, this is the zombie two-step. One step, two step, zombie step, blue step. I always go for the one fish, two fish reference, and it never works. I should really stop making that same joke. But hey, one fish, two fish, possibly one of the greatest Dr. Seuss works of all time. What's not to love about one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish? Anybody else? Size zombie? No, you know what, size zombie? You're good. Who else has got to go? Steve Pokemon Irwin. All right, Steve, you're going to come stand and open right over here by our friend, the commander's My avatar. We're taking no chances here. For once, I'm gonna try and play it smarter than I actually am. Just the zombie is left, we end our turn. Affirmative, covering now. 
And also, I think, uh, Steve is also ever vigilant, so he's keep us covered. Let's see what the aliens, if they wander into us. Nope. Oh. Alright. Well, looking at the clock on this one, I think this may be where we wrap things up, and whatever this pod is that's stomping around in Monica and Chandler's house, we'll have to fight it next time. If you enjoyed the episode, feel free to drop a like down in the comment section. Of course, your support does really mean a lot to us. And if you'd like to see whether or not our Dawn of the Dead Plan Z style does in fact make Zack Snyder weep with its beauty, I consider subscribing as well. Catch the conclusion of our legendary All-Stars run, possibly next time. More likely, probably two times from now, because that last room really does take a long time. We've done this mission before on Commander, so we kind of know what to expect. But if you want to catch that, consider subscribing as well. Right now, thanks very much for watching. Monica, Chandler, Phoebe, and the rest of the gang will have to wait for next time. I don't know why Phoebe got top billing over, like, Rachel or Ross there. She was clearly the weakest friend, clearly. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you again soon.